Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 14th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Chicago, Illinois. Federal holiday today in the United States, so I'll keep today's podcast a little bit shorter. For all the friends of Yara, we do have a new version. This version makes the XOR modifier a little bit more flexible and also adds private strings. If you're not familiar with Yara, Yara is essentially a language to describe binaries and patterns. So it's often used in open source antivirus and malware detection engines. Now these days uh, we keep hearing about antivirus companies releasing decryption tools for various ransomware strains. There's a new twist to this that sort of was released on Friday. A web developer in Germany, Tobias Fremel, was infected with ransomware that hit his QNAP network accessible storage device. And after he actually paid for the ransomware, he discovered that one of the web server that the ransomware was communicating with had an open web shell installed. So he used this web shell to essentially compromise that server further and exfiltrate any keys stored in the server's database for different uh, victims of this ransomware. He made these keys public, so if you were recently infected by the Moustique ransomware, you may want to take a look at the list and see if it helps you decrypt your data. Of course, this kind of hacking back is always uh, quite uh, controversial. According to the description I read, uh, I think he did sort of the minimum amount of hacking, so to speak, in order to get the data back for other victims of this criminal. So I would call his response to be proportional. On the other hand, uh, these web servers that were used by the ransomware were third-party web servers that were compromised by the ransomware. So that's always the risk here that if you overstep your boundaries, you're actually doing additional damage to victims of other attacks. And Malware Hunter team came across an interesting cryptocurrency trading platform, or at least that's what it claimed to contain, that did include additional goodies in the form of info stealing malware. The platform was called JMT Trader and was apparently released for Windows as well as for Mac OS. If a user installed this particular platform, it would also exfiltrate that particular user's credentials for various uh, cryptocurrency accounts. So if you fell for this particular malware and actually the website looked pretty slick and professional, you should certainly change your credentials immediately. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.